here's an oddity. It's an aquarium heater, could have other applications, but it's designed to run from a USB power supply, which is quite strange because it's just 5 volts. And the listing was a bit deceptive about the, the power rating. One of them said it was 25 watts, which would be 5 amps on five, uh, a USB power supply. Uh, so probably not accurate. But in reality, uh, this thing is rated theoretically 10 watts. Let me grab a power supply and plug it in. We've got a little power analyzer here. And I'll plug this in. And slight delay and it goes it shows like we're getting five volts here it shows 1.65 amps or roughly about eight watts and initially when i took this out i don't know if you can see this i'll zoom down it can you see the display is so dim but it is displaying the temperature and when you click the button uh, it wakes the temperature display the main setting up and then you can click through and it rolls over at, uh, click, 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 is it, it goes up in half degree Celsius increments. I wonder if it can be changed. Yeah, it went up to about 35 and then it went back down to 18. And then you can click up and the, it's showing because it's warm already, the LED's gone green. It's red for heating, uh, green for heated and yellow for problems. Okay, let's take a closer look. Initially when it's arrived, I didn't think there was a digital display in it because you can't really see it in this box. It's uh, It looks like a black case. And I thought this was just going to be simple click on, click off, but it's not. It is digitally controlled. Let's take a look in this first. So I shall peel the rubber back. It's potted in in resin. And also I think the heating element is potted in resin down at the bottom. Let's pull this label off and see if it reveals anything underneath. It is, it's just basically granules like a sand or something for thermal coupling and they've poured in silicone resin. If I pull that, is it going to come out? Is it going to come out? This is where I destroy it completely, but that's okay. I'm guessing the circuit board here has a thermistor on it. This is just going to break the glass, isn't it? I'll tell you what, I'll pause momentarily while I take this out because otherwise things are going to take a while if I, I don't want to destroy this in the process. One moment, please. The heater has been extracted, as has the circuit board and components taken off it, and it's been reverse engineered. This case just basically unclips. It's got a clip in each corner. So this tube here, this glass tube, if I zoom down it, it has... Can you see that sand? It is black sand. It's not conductive. It's, it's got a metallic granular look, but it is just a sort of fine sand. And to make this, they've used this heater, which is a ceramic core with an end cap in each end. And then they've wire wound it like, well, it is a wire wound resistor without a cover. And they've spot welded the resistance wire onto each end of the cap. And then the wires are just soldered onto that. So they've basically plunged that into the sand and then they've poured in some silicone, which is very squishy and was so good that it's uh, it was quite hard. I had to physically slice all the way around to get it out the glass. Then they've got a circuit board here with the wires on it. And the main cable with four cores comes on and under the silicone at the top that seals it in very tightly is a little thermistor. It's a 10K diode style thermistor and then the wire's going down to the heater. Very straightforward. Quite a nice design, really. Here is the translucent case. Now we can see it is translucent. I was looking for a light to shine through it. I can see a light at the risk of causing an avalanche of things onto the bench, like this Sharpie that has just decided to get in. It is, basically speaking, a sort of grey case. It looks black, but it is grey. I wonder how bright it is. I didn't check that. With the cover off. The circuit board itself... Well, tell you what, I've got a picture of the circuit board so we can explore it. I shall zoom back out a little bit here. I will bring the circuit board in. Oh, wrong side of the circuit board. Oh, no, actually, you know what? Let's show you that side of the circuit board. So I shall focus down onto that. The main things to note about this circuit board uh, are that it's had a horrible manufacturing incident. Maybe that's why it was cheap in AliExpress. 
And the blade that comes across, the spinning blade that normally cuts these solder connections flush, well, not flush completely, but it basically cuts the wire ends off them to make a nice flat bottom to the circuit board. It's made contact with the circuit board and it's scuffed off the solder resist that covers these tracks. It's also possibly taken part of that track off and these connections were all absolutely flush the circuit board. It's Something's happened. Anyway... You've got negative coming on at one end and positive coming on at the other end. Five volts in this case, but it turns out it could be probably a lot higher, although capacitors on the circuit board limit that. On the other side, we have the connection to the heater, and we, which is the positive and the ingoing positive, and then they've got the switched negative to the heater. We've got a random plus five volts-ish. We've got a random zero volts, which isn't actually used, but then these... Uh, pink and yellow connections are for the thermistor going out to the the little pod. Let's bring in the main circuit board. Now, this is much more complex than I was expecting. I removed the LED display just so we could actually see what was underneath it because everything was buried. But we have from left to right, we've got a MOSFET, an AHOX for switching the heater on. We've got its associated uh, pull-down resistors and its uh, gate resistor that goes straight over to this fairly capable microcontroller which says AB CXXC14B6B by the look of it. We have a 5 volt regulator which is a bit odd but given that it's a 5 volt supply but that alludes to the possibility it's designed for higher voltage especially with a 10 ohm resistor that's 1 0 and a 0 is a decimal multiplier so it's just 10 ohms. And that is coming from the incoming supply. So theoretically, this circuit board could be used up to probably 12 or 24 volts. The 5 volt supply goes over to the microcontroller here. And the display is multiplexed directly by the microcontroller without resistors. So it's presumably got a built-in display driver. And that includes the red and green LED. But they've added 2K resistors in each of the pins. Although it's in the multiplexing just to tame its intensity down. We've got two capacitors here. One is the incoming supply capacitor. It's only rated 10 volts. Uh, that is a shame because, well, it would have been directly ready to use at higher voltages, but you could swap that out. And then we've got a 5 volt uh, capacitor here as well. Then it's just decoupling capacitors. One for a little internal supply reference in the microcontroller. Uh, one for the supply to the microcontroller via another 10 ohm resistor. And then a complex voltage divider with more decoupling capacitors uh, to provide a voltage level down to the thermistor and then it comes back via a couple of I presume are they're two in parallel and they're both 10k I think this is for calibration to fine tune it in design uh, and then do the rest in software then there's a little crystal 26 megahertz which is ludicrous for what this is doing uh, let's take a look at the schematic mish money penny. I'll zoom down a little tiny bit more. That was not down. That was up. Here's the incoming supply, and there is the main hobbling thing for the voltage. If you change this to, say, a 20-volt capacitor or 25-volt capacitor, you could then use this up to 12, 24 volts, probably. This 10 ohm resistor here is to take some of the strain off the 5 volt regulator. At the higher voltages, it just drops part of the voltage, depending on the current that's actually flowing, flowing through the regulator. The 5 volt regulator will be struggling to create 5 volts, which is why this is probably creating its own internal supply of 3.3 volts, I'd guess, with this little external capacitor to uh, act as its sort of decoupling capacitor. Uh, this down here is a representation of that uh, heater with the ceramic core and the end cap on each end and the spot wired wire and then zigzagging along and then just spot welding the other end. Quite nice and simple. Maybe that's how other wire wired resistors are made. I presume it is. Uh, there's a button going to the zero volt rail with a 1K resistor in series. There's the little uh, oscillator, the resonator, crystal, whatever it is. And there's a 2K resistor to the gate of the MOSFET with a 4K7 pull down resistor, which is quite low. That would normally be 10K. But they've done that, and that turns on the resistor shown as a zigzaggy line here. Then comes a complicated bit. There is a control output, possibly a regulated supply for the um, thermistor because it has a capacitor. There's a 1K resistor then leading to that thermistor, 
And then it goes down to these two 10K resistors in parallel and goes back to the unit. But then there's a tap taken off that via 5.1K resistor and a filtering capacitor, perhaps. Um, and that may be the signal back in, the measuring uh, point that it takes it off that uh, potential divider. Um, but this circuit board, technically speaking, you could just add 10K resistor and a resistor of your choice externally and just make those adjustments to that capacitor and then you could run it at the higher voltage probably. And that would give you a, a versatile little module. Hopefully yours wouldn't have a big skid mark in the back like mine has. Um, and there's the oddity of the two 2K resistors and a center tapped uh, LED with a red and green chip uh, with common positive and then going into that matrix. Strange. But that is it. It was actually fairly complicated inside compared to what I was expecting. I was expecting a much smaller chip um, as they often use. But I suppose maybe they've gone for the higher pin count for the multiplexing because the display does have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 pins. So that's probably 8 uh, for the segments and then 3 for the uh, digits. And I'm guessing maybe they've just used opposite polarity to actually drive these LEDs just to shuffle them in. But there we have it. It's an interesting circuit. It uh, it works. It does the job. It heats up. It has temperature control. What more could you ask for? Quite an interesting thing to take apart. 